Hey guys, Chris Pearson here with Nebulosity. Thank you for joining. Welcome back to the neighborhood and welcome to galaxy season. Uh, for those of you that are new to astrophotography or perhaps not familiar with this hobby, this is the season where, you know, sort of the Milky Way core, the center of the galaxy is no longer in the night sky for majority of the evening. And instead, as we point our telescopes to the sky, we're looking out towards deep space outside of our neighborhood, which is so cool. And we can capture objects as far as hundreds of millions of light years away, depending on the focal length. But that's the topic of this particular video, focal length. Oh my God, what a reality check. Uh, I've got the Red Cat 51, as you guys may have noticed in my previous videos. It's a wonderful scope, 250 millimeters, paired up with the uh, ASI 2600 MC Pro one-shot color camera. That's an APS-C crop sensor, sort of like what you have in a lot of DSLR cameras, like my Canon EOS 80D. And that gives you a crop sensor factor of like 1.6. So 250 millimeters looks a little bit closer to sort of 400, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that sort of focal length just is not gonna do justice for a lot of the really, really small galaxies that are out there in galaxy season. So I was kind of bummed in March. I'm like, what do I do? Um, you know, exhibit A, this is a project that I did about two weeks ago. I posted the image on Instagram. I think last week I got a lot of good feedback on it. This is M101. The pinwheel galaxy absolutely love it it's the smallest galaxy i've ever photographed and if i showed you the original image that i took and how small this galaxy was and i cropped in and i still got this image you'd be floored so hats off to the guys at william optics and zwo for this telescope and this camera uh, they're super powerful and it's just amazing that we can even even capture this with such a short focal length having said that you know i spent about 18 hours on this object over five nights right and uh, three days of broadband data to sort of capture the natural colors as much as possible, as well as two more nights of narrowband data to really get the you know, hydrogen alpha and oxygen and, and build this composite image. Um, it, it's beautiful, you know, you can see colors, you can see those pinkish areas, that's where the hydrogen gas is from the, the H alpha. So really cool, but you can see it's a little blurry. There isn't really that you know, minute detail in the core and on the areas that you'd see with those big telescopes that people are flexing out there right now with the, the Schmidt Cassegrains, Edge, you know, Edge 11s, Edge 14s, your big Newtonians, you know, your 10 inch, your eight inches, uh, and your big six inch refractor telescopes. All of those are perfectly wonderful telescopes. And you know, that's really wonderful. But what do you do when you have a short telescope like mine? I'm sure, you know, many of you out there are facing a similar dilemma. I thought back to a project that I did a month or so ago where I, you know, I photographed a cluster of stars. And I said to myself, there's got to be a cluster of galaxies out there. And sure enough, I found Abel 1656. This is known as the Coma Cluster, located in Coma Berenices. And when you look at it through Stellarium, this online app on desktops and mobile apps to sort of frame up the night sky, a sort of virtual planetarium, you can see with this sensor, uh, it's still you know, a wide enough object that you can capture it. And the reason why is it's a cluster of a thousand galaxies. I mean, imagine 1,000 galaxies in, in a small, tight, compact area space. Super cool, and it's 330 million light years away. So hey, you know, that's not too shabby, you know, of an object to be photographing with such a short focal length telescope, certainly not in light polluted skies. The other reason why I'm really excited about this particular image is its history. So back in 1925, uh, a Swiss-born astronomer by the name of Fritz Zwicky emigrated to the United States and you know, started working at Caltech in California. And in 1933, after pouring over you know, tons and tons of data, looking at you know, the mass, he was measuring the velocity of these galaxies juxtaposed to one another. So he postulated at that time that there must be some sort of dark material influencing these galaxies and their movement and the gravitational forces. Of course, we now sort of refer to this dark material as dark matter. Material as dark matter. Dark material as dark matter. Um, and even dark energy, if you want to go deeper into sort of the scientific theories around these, these influences that you can't see. And so this is really cool. I'm not going to be capturing any sort of dark matter forces in my image, but just the fact that I'm capturing an image that professional astronomers and astrophysicists are still looking at to try to unlock the secrets of the universe, I think is so cool. And it's part of that, you know, wonderful wow factor of this hobby that it's not just about, you know, producing a beautiful image, but there's really a story behind each and every one of these objects. So that's ultimately the goal of this project. I'm going to give it a couple of days. Knock on wood, I did not just jinx myself. The forecast says this is going to hold up for a couple of evenings. 
Um, but yeah, it's about, you know, it's about influence. It's about, it's about history. It's about science. It's about inspiration. And I hope that this video inspires some of you who maybe aren't into the hobby quite yet, uh, that you can, you know, get a short focal length telescope or perhaps a DSLR camera, attach it and be able to photograph some of these, you know, distant clusters of objects, even when we don't have the big hydrogen nebulae and other galaxies out there to film. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much it on this end. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's get to it. Best of luck, clear skies to you guys. And uh, hopefully at the end of the video, you know, we've got something worth showing. Take care. Okay guys, we are just about set up here. I got a couple more steps to go to get this ready and then eventually get it polar aligned. The sun is going down uh, very slowly. As you can see, the sky is starting to darken and just in a, you know, another few minutes, the stars are gonna start popping out. But in the background, I just wanted to showcase these beautiful, beautiful uh, blossoms. You know, If you've not been to the DC region in the spring, I highly recommend it. The cherry blossoms are absolutely exquisite. Uh, but beyond that, I absolutely love this rig, the HEQ5 Pro from Skywatcher, the Red Cat 51, just an all around, year round, portable rig. Wonderful for someone like myself and maybe you who have to travel, travel a bit uh, to get your, your sort of mobile observatory set up on any given night. So really optimistic, we can get some good data. We'll see what comes of it at the end of the video, but I just can't recommend this setup enough and hopefully you guys out there have clear skies where you are and are having a lot of success with your own projects. and astrophotography are amazing hobbies but if there's one thing I've learned in this first year it's to be patient you're gonna make mistakes and that's okay what's important is that you grow and learn each and every night because over time you're gonna see the difference if I look back to my first image nine months ago when I was shooting Comet Neowise with nothing but a tripod and a simple DSLR to today it's night and day and that's in part because of the generosity of those on YouTube and elsewhere who've been doing this for years sharing their knowledge and building out this community. I hope that this channel and this video help to contribute towards that, that you're successful in what you do, and hopefully be able to share your experiences with others.